All right. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us today for our webinar. This is three habits that will make you a part art rock star in 2018. My name is Jacqueline Fassett. I'll be your moderator for today. And I'm really excited to um, learn more and talk to you about Pardot. It's going to be great. So just a few housekeeping notes. Um, please note that during today's presentation, we encourage you to submit questions through your GoToWebinar control panel. Uh, we'll leave time at the end of the webinar to answer a few of those questions, but we want all your burning part out questions that are getting in the way of you getting things done. We are also open to general questions about marketing automation and email strategy, so throw those in there if you have any questions. We'll provide contact information and resource links if you wish to ask more or explore a topic in more detail um, on your own after the webinar. We'll also be recording today's webinar and sharing that recording, the slide deck, and a few more resources with all registrants at the end of this. So just a couple of quick intros. Again, my name is Jacqueline Fassett. I'm the marketing coordinator here at Idealist Consulting. I am a Pardot uh, specialist, so I'm certified. Um, I'm a big Pardot enthusiast. Um, I've been using Pardot for about a year and a half now, and I love it. Um, if you ever meet me in person, I will talk your ear off about it gladly. Um, but I'd love to introduce you to Kirsten Kippen, the speaker of today. Hi, can you hear me okay, Jacqueline? I can. Great. Okay. Well, thank you so much for that great intro. And I am so excited to talk with you all today more about Pardot and marketing um, and what's ahead for 2018. So just a quick word about me before we dive in. Um, I'm originally from Alaska, so that's why I had to pick a snowy photo for the background. Um, this is actually our office in a rare Portland snowstorm last year uh, in Portland, Oregon. But um, yeah, I've been in Oregon for the past 15 years now, and I've been at Idealist Consulting for almost five years where um, I built our marketing department from the ground up using a tool called Vertical Response, which was really common in the nonprofit world in the beginning, and then progressing up through HubSpot and Pardot uh, internally. And then we also help clients a lot with Pardot and marketing automation as well. So a quick word about Idealist Consulting. We were founded by a Peace Corps volunteer, Rob Jordan, in 2006, and we got our start building what became the nonprofit success pack for Salesforce. Today, we are a B Corp providing Salesforce marketing automation and application development services for nonprofits and progressive businesses throughout the country. And like I said, in addition to using Pardot internally, we also help nonprofits and businesses set it up and make the most of it. So here is what we have on the docket today for this webinar. We will be covering, first of all, our number one tip for beginners in Pardot, um, kind of an easy win for getting on the right footing for using the tools even better. And then we'll get into how to make Pardot a habit, um, how to align Pardot with your company goals. And I also wanted to um, just kind of give a brief note about how this conversation we're having today is really a whole different beast from any other kind of audit or health check resources. Um, Salesforce has been putting out some really great audits and health checks for Pardot in particular in the past couple months. And that can be that can be an amazing starting point for telling you whether you've set up Pardot properly. So I think of it as a really great tool for anyone who either self-implemented Pardot or maybe doesn't quite trust the work that a partner did, hopefully not us. <laughs> um, and I highly recommend starting here and then kind of adding on some of the tips that we're discussing today, if, if you're kind of wanting to double check that you have a good foundation in Pardot. And this webinar today is gonna to be all about the next step. So what can you focus on for the biggest results? How can you start thinking more like a marketer? And um, we'll also be sending our own audit resource that's kind of designed as more of like a utilization audit to be more of a kind of pure focused marketer to marketer, how can you make sure you're making the most of the tool to everyone who registered today. So stay tuned for your follow-up email. And, um, and we're really excited to share that as a preview of some of our Pardot support offerings. So um, to kick things off today, I'm really curious to just learn a little bit more about who is on the line since this whole webinar experience can feel a little bit one-sided sometimes. 
So Jacqueline, could you go ahead and launch the quiz for us? All right, great. So should be up now. And we'll give people just a minute to answer that question. Okay, and I'm realizing I actually can't see the results on my screen, so I'm hoping that I'm hoping that other people do when it closes. But um, Jacqueline, could you hop back on for a minute and, and tell us the high-level results? Jacqueline, you might be on mute. All right. I was just making sure we could share this. So um, it looks like I was yeah. able to share my screen. Um, and here are the results of our poll. So it looks like most people, uh, Parda is all brand new to them. And then under that, everyone's been or 25 percent have been using this uh, tool for less than six months. Wow. Great. OK. Well, that is super. Um, because we are going to actually kick things off with talking a little bit about um, about some kind of basic thing, basic things for beginners. So that makes me feel really solid about where, where we're going next. Thanks for that, Jacqueline, and thanks everyone for responding. Okay, so a nice little bulldog meme to kick things off here. So I want to really encourage acceptance for, um, for all Cardot users that I talk to. I think there is um, a, a definite kind of imposter syndrome thing happening with marketers using marketing automation today where it feels like, um, you know, big companies that are featured at Dreamforce have it all figured out and have, have it all, all just super dialed in. And I think that's, that's an awesome goal, but um, you really need to kind of put in a lot of grunt work before you achieve that, of course, like anything worth doing. And for us at Idealist Consulting, we didn't really get meaningful data for several months, um, even having access to Cardot experts internally. And it's still very much a work in progress. And I think that's true for any kind of marketing strategy or marketing tool. So it's OK. Um, take a deep breath. And, uh, and if you apply some of these things that we're talking about today, you should feel a lot better. So. Um, a little shout out to Oasis here to connect to the theme of Rockstar, becoming a part of Rockstar from today's webinar. Um, Oasis was one of my favorite bands in high school, showing my age a little bit. But I, I love this quote, we're not arrogant, we just believe we're the best band in the world, because I think it speaks to this sort of cool confidence that the best marketers I know have that they also have in common with rock stars, right? So um, figure out where you can riff when you're doing marketing and using Cardot and where you just need to practice your skills and kind of get the basics down uh, before you improve upon them. So we are going to start with some definitions of what is Cardot and what, what does this marketing automation universe kind of entail. So if you Google Cardot, this is the landing page that you get. Um, you're connected directly to uh, Salesforce's page that talks about smarter, smarter marketing automation on the world's number one CRM platform. And, uh, and it's most commonly described as B2B communications. But, uh, and this, this is smart for them to focus on the CRM component as well, because part of real strength lies in connecting it to your CRM. I can say, um, based on personal experience, when we were using HubSpot with Salesforce, it was a lot trickier to really show results because HubSpot's not native to Cardot um, as much as I love it for all the great little marketing uh, resources that it has. I think we were able to really go further having something that's connected within the Cardot ecosystem, Salesforce ecosystem. Um, so part of real strength lies in connecting it to your CRM. And in Salesforce, you've likely been tracking data and customers for longer than you've been using Salesforce. So you can kind of build on that foundation to, to go further with marketing. And these are some of the features. Uh, what is Pardot to the user? Just kind of adding on to this definition of what is Pardot to us. So what is Pardot to the user? These are some features that, uh, that users talk about often. And Pardot has many of these features in common with other marketing automation platforms like Marketo or HubSpot. Um, 
some of these are even included in basic tools like MailChimp. I think they're starting, obviously they do email marketing, but I think they're starting to kind of get into grading and some of these other components now, but it's really a whole, whole different ballgame than when you get into a tool as robust as Pardot. So these are some of the things that you can start kind of putting together in creative ways when you use Pardot. And I added that community slide at the end because I think that's really one of the key differentiators for me with Pardot is that there's, you have access to this whole Salesforce community that, um, that is really open and willing to share with each other and that sort of thing and a really um, well-established partner community as well, which I think is really a, a big differentiator from some of the other marketing automation tools. Okay, and then what else is part of to the user? So where it gets really interesting is that um, when, when you think about how people are actually using the tool. So every marketer that I ever meet wants to know what's working for you, right? Like that's the thing that marketers talk about with each other. Like, are you getting value from AdWords? Are you getting value from, um, you know, Facebook ads, that sort of thing. And so I think where you can really start breaking down the, the value of Pardot is when you talk to other users and hear how people are using the tool. So some of the things that we've seen our clients use Pardot for are listed on the slide right now. And I want to speak briefly to the second bullet point, renew annual memberships, um, because I know there's some nonprofits on the line today who, um, who probably are trying to figure out kind of like what different ways can they use Pardot for beyond just the standard B2B sales funnel. And the, um, our client KVIE uses Pardot automation rules to send emails to members right before their membership expires. And they don't have to manually monitor donor lists because the data that they're automating off of is already a Salesforce field. So what this does is it frees up staff to focus on other tasks like creating really smart personal sounding emails while they're still driving up renewals. So sounds simple, but it's freed up a lot of staff time they, they have it dialed in so they don't have to automate or they don't have to track lists or upload download like you do all the time when you're using something like MailChimp. Um, so it's, it's kind of an out of the, out of the standard use case uh, thing that they're able to do that I think is pretty cool. And I'm happy to dive into some of these others during Q&A at the end if anyone else is curious. So there's so many cool examples that use those features that we called out on this page in, um, in different ways. So you can do a whole lot more than just generate and nurture leads to serve different departments in really creative ways. Okay, so tying all of this together, we've got what Cardot is to Salesforce, what it can be to the user, and I think we're kind of getting closer to a holistic definition of what's Cardot or even what's marketing automation. Um, and for us, it's, or for me personally, at least, uh, Pardot is the central place where I do scalable marketing outreach with Idealist Consulting. So, um, so it's, it's this place where we can do marketing outreach at scale, and we can also figure out who's worth individual attention. And that's really valuable for a small marketing team who's trying to kind of do all the things, wear all the hats and also give really smart guidance to different teams on who's worth following up with. You know, it's like you get, you get all of this kind of creepy marketing type data that, um, that sometimes it's hard to know how to process and really know what to do with. So you might have actually experienced some of this. Um, hopefully you didn't get creeped out while you were signing up for the webinar. We sent one email out to anyone who had downloaded marketing automation related resources um, referencing that. So for example, if you downloaded our marketing automation white paper, um, a comparison white paper in the past, we thought you might be interested in this webinar. And so we send a special kind of personalized invite for that. Um, we send another one to people we know are already using Cardot because we thought this was, this was gonna get into some value that could be really helpful as you expand your use. We send another one about um, kind of broader for people who aren't necessarily using Cardot, but wanted to learn how to be smarter about segmentation and lists because we're getting at some of those concepts that really transcend the tool that you're using um, and hopefully are gonna be helpful no matter what communication tool you're on. So for us at Idealist Consulting, I think of Pardot now is really the hub of everything that Jacqueline and I are doing in our marketing department. And um, honestly, like for a small business, it's a, it's a kind of sizable investment. And so it's not, if Pardot has not become 
this hub for you yet, then I encourage you to kind of think about why not and think about what you need to change and, and do in order to make it that hub. So uh, luckily, we have, some, we have some tools for this. So we have a baseline of understanding now about what Pardot is and what it can be in specific use cases. And I want to talk a little bit now about our number one tip for beginners in Pardot, or any user in Pardot for that matter, which is to think like a marketer and specifically identify your ideal client. Even if you're not a marketer in title. So this slide in front of you right now shows all of, or a small portion actually, of the people who registered for the webinar today. And you can see there's a lot of marketing titles on here, but there's also a lot that are not marketing titles who you might not expect to be interested in Pardot. Career coordinator, president, um, associate of digital production, manager for recruitment. Um, I've seen basically all teams that would be part of a standard nonprofit or B2B type company use Pardot in, in different ways. So I think this really speaks to the fact that marketing tools are growing and evolving to the point where they're a go-to for other departments. Um, I know for us internally, there's, there's a lot of conversations that start with something cool that marketing is doing and then sales kind of perks up their ears and wonder how they can get a piece of that. Um, we've talked a little bit about using Pardot tools for HR recruitment style efforts. So I think if, even if you're not a marketer in title, um, I encourage you to think about learning how to think like a marketer. And one way to do that is this ideal client concept that, um, that we're gonna talk about for a minute. So I think a lot of marketers have probably um, thought about this before. Marketers certainly think a lot about speaking personally to different audiences. Most marketers at some point in their career have done the work of building out personas, which is another way of describing this ideal client concept. And this is an exercise that can be accessible and really critical for anyone who's using marketing tools. And so we're going to send uh, a link to the worksheet after the webinar to help you with this. But the, the core of this is pretty simple, actually. It's just defining the characteristics of your ideal client. And I encourage you to start by just asking any team at your company who, um, who talks with clients regularly, any client-facing department, and ask them who are their best clients or maybe who are their best donors or members. And you'll probably start to gather um, a description of actual, actual people, right? It's like when you think about this, you're gonna think of Barb, the major donor, or um, you know, Joe, the account executive as the new uh, channel partner that you're talking with or something like that. Uh, and so, so you'll probably think about different people, but then you'll also start to hopefully realize that they have some attributes in common in terms of data points. And so, for example, maybe you realize that people who are between 30 and 40 years old who live in urban areas make up the vast majority of your recurring donors or people who donate online every month. Um, a B2B example, maybe you realize that tech services or manufacturing um, are the industries that are the best for you. And especially if they have over 25 staff, and they're going to be the best client prospects for you. So that, that kind of starts to build out this ideal client profile. And then the key part that I think agencies certainly don't talk about in my experience, and a lot of marketers don't even really get to this point for a while, is figuring out how that connects to your data. So this is where Pardot gets really fun. And it sounds so simple, but a lot of clients don't do this and we didn't really have this very well dialed in ourselves until recently. So what this means is that when you have that profile of your ideal client and you know that they live in certain states, they work for companies that have certain number of staff, they, um, they have different industries, that kind of thing, you need to make sure that those form fields are on all of your forms and that you're using Pardot forms for that. And, um, and so if you need clients who are in a certain industry, make sure you're asking for industry on all forms. And then also like make sure that you're not using different forms that aren't connected to Pardot as much as possible. So what I mean by that is that um, if you're using Eventbrite, look into using the Pardot integration so that you can get that data in Pardot too. If you're using GoToWebinar, then definitely use that inter inter integration. Sorry, <laughs> misspoke. Um, 
it's it's a really easy one. We're using it internally for this webinar today, and it's it's super simple to set up. Um, so sometimes you're going to have to make a trade-off. You can't ask for all of the data points. Maybe you have to skip phone number or revenue because a lot of people don't like filling out more than say seven or eight different questions on a form. But um, you can also consider using progressive profiling if you want to build out more of a profile of people over time. And that's a part of feature that lets you, um, there's kind of a different form option you can check so that people who've already given you basic data, the system will, will know that when they come because they're cookied. And um, it'll ask them for new form fields so that you can ask them, say, for phone number instead or that sort of thing. And in addition to this being helpful with forms, you can also use this concept to inform your list. Um, and you can use it for dynamic content, for grading, and you can even create a, your own list of ideal clients or um, marketing qualified leads. And the dynamic content piece is really interesting because um, you can use one of these fields to inform whether somebody gets a certain chunk of content in an email or a different chunk. So um, we had a client who was a um, Humane Society style client who, who um, knew that their user or that their donors either liked kittens or puppies better. And so then you can use that to say like, okay, I'm gonna feature a kitten for adoption in this email and a puppy for adoption in this other email. And you can apply that kind of thinking to, um, to business B2B type emails as well. And then I also encourage you to think about Salesforce dashboards um, in terms of measuring, and we're gonna talk about this a little bit more at the end. But if you're thinking about MQLs and SQLs, Pardot has some basic reports for that, but I think you'll actually see more value um, kind of reporting on trends through Salesforce reports. Okay, so now we're getting into tip number two. After you've created an ideal client profile, um, I want you to make Pardot a habit. And this picture um, speaks to this phrase, don't boil the ocean, which our CEO loves to bring up a lot um, when we're talking about getting into new projects. And, uh, and he really encourages us internally to not, um, not do everything that's possible to do, right? When you're taking on an overly large and potentially super complicated task, uh, don't, don't, don't do it all. Just do the piece that, that you can handle, right? And so if you're thinking about Pardot and getting kind of overwhelmed by all this out there, um, don't worry about doing everything immediately, but do figure out what you can, what you can make a habit. And I'm gonna give you some ideas on how you can approach that. So this little visual is borrowed from Charles Duhigg, who wrote this great book called The Power of Habit that I highly recommend. And um, he talks about how you need to start small when you're um, trying to get a new habit into your routine. And so you start with Q, and you wanna think about what time will the habit occur? Where will you be? Who will be around? And so when it comes to Pardot, maybe, maybe you just bought Pardot four months ago, six months ago, yesterday, whatever, um, then you're not using it yet, but you do have the basics implemented. So think about what could start to trigger your Pardot use. So a really good example of this is, um, you know, you need to throw an event next month. So think about how you can do parts of that in Pardot. Maybe you're gonna use an engagement program to drive registration for the event, and you're going to connect the event right form to Pardot forms. Um, specific things like that that are already part of your workload that you can start to bring into Pardot. And then routine. So the behavior, this is the behavior that you want to make a habit. So think about like when a cue happens. So when you start doing a marketing activity like planning an event or sending an email, you will start to practice that in Pardot instead, right? I'm not sure what the cafeteria is here. That was probably the context was lost when I stole this graphic. Um, but the yeah, the essence is that the routine is the behavior that you want to make the habit. And then you have the reward after that. And this is where I kind of went off with my own thinking here a little bit. This isn't directly from Charles Duhigg, but for reward, I think in Pardot, you can think about who can you celebrate with and who in your community can help with that. So um, maybe the intrinsic reward of just knowing that you did something in Pardot is good enough, 
but for a lot of people, you need a little bit more than that. So, um, and you need to actually get some kind of social validation from that. And so we're going to talk about kind of how you can find those part of, part of support networks also. And we will talk next about some specific cues and routines that you can start considering in Pardot. And I'm going to turn it back to Jacqueline for a couple minutes here to talk about what we're using in Pardot since she's one of our most active Pardot users at Idealist. Hi, everyone. Hello again. All right. So um, I want to talk to you about my excuses and my routine tasks in Pardot. Um, so as the team member, who keeps an eye on our leads, um, I'm able to keep my finger on the pulse of our uh, prospects at a glance um, because we've built lists of prospects by their interests, their grades, their scores, and more. Um, at any point in time, I can easily find data on our marketing efforts. Um, however, Pardot works best when it's part of my routine. Um, for me, this means I use the tool every morning um, and afternoon to schedule and maintain our social accounts. Um, we send one to two mass emails a week, and not only am I able to create and send these emails, but I can also review past email metrics to ensure that the new emails going out are keeping our audience engaged. Um, I also monitor the progress of our engagement programs and new signups for resources like this webinar. Um, easily throughout the week. So these are things that I just routinely do. Um, all of this keeps me in the tool and thinking creatively um, about how to further use it. Um, while we've been able to think of many ways to better use the system, um, one idea we had was to better track engaged prospects um, in Pardot with Salesforce. Uh, essentially, an engagement program checks leads um, for a high engagement score, for us, that's 250 or above. Um, so they've gotten all these points racked up for their engagement. Um, and then um, the system uh, makes sure that they're not a competitor or on certain lists. Um, and then it'll create a task for me um, to check their profile and reach out to them. So that's one way um, that Pardot has allowed me to um, continue to work in Salesforce and be in the tool every day and just really engaging with our engaged prospects. Um, keeping Pardot as part of my daily and weekly routine has really assured um, myself and our team that we truly have a finger on the pulse of our system um, and that we're constantly focusing on how we can improve our marketing efforts. Um, yeah, that's I love Pardot and that is kind of all the steps that kind of keep me routinely in there. Um, and those are my excuses for being in Pardot. So with that, I'll pass it back to Kirsten. Thank you, Jacqueline. That was great. And um, just to add one one more um, little piece to that that kind of balances it out, I want to I want to be really transparent about the fact that it's not all rosy for us, even though we've been in Pardot for over a year. Um, and I think one of the benefits of of having excuses to go in there regularly is that um, you notice more quickly when something is a little bit off. And so one quick example that I can give that just came up for us yesterday is that we changed one of our Salesforce pick lists so that it had slightly different ranges for, um, for the pick list. And so instead of, you know, 20 to 50, it had 20 to 55 or something like that. And then um, we realized soon after, because one of our reports wasn't working in Salesforce, that the Pardot forms hadn't been updated for that yet. And so we had to go in and kind of like update the forms as well. And I think being being in the habit already of being in Pardot every day made that process a lot less stressful than it would have been um, a year ago when we were kind of more, more green on the system. And so uh, there, there's a lot of kind of daily small maintenance that will happen. Um, if you're kind of being creative and getting curious about tweaking things. And so I think the more you can just kind of get uh, get a thick skin and get used to um, being able to do certain admin style things through Pardot um, or leaning on a consultant to help with that, I think the, the better you're also, or the faster you'll see results as well. Okay, so um, once you have a queue and a routine through some regular activities that you can begin to do in Pardot, like some of the things that Jacqueline spoke to. Part of your reward should be um, 
finding some social support as well and celebrating this and building your support community. Um, if you can find a St. Bernard that knows Pardot, we're power to you. But if not, there is a great virtual community called Pardot B2B Community on the Trailblazer, formerly called Success Community. Um, and then there's also in-person opportunities. So there's Pardot user groups in a lot of urban centers. Um, we have one in Portland here that we started recently, and I know a lot of other big cities have them. There's a really great one in Atlanta. And, um, and then in addition to that, I really encourage you to find people within your own companies that you can talk to about Pardot. And so if you're the main marketer, that's great. Um, maybe you're the only person using Pardot, or maybe you have a team who's using it with you. But find an excuse to find a friend so that you maybe talk about Pardot regularly with your sales leader, or if you're in membership, maybe you talk about it regularly with um, with marketing or with development or something like that. And even if the other department isn't using it fully yet, I think if you can kind of get in the habit of having those conversations, um, it's just going to get a lot more interesting for you, and you'll be able to um, put the ideas together and and get curious about doing new experiments. And then, of course, if you're not the Pardot owner, the person who's kind of in charge of, of using Pardot for your company, just be, be careful of overstepping, right? It's like as you get excited about experimenting, you want to make sure that you're um, being respectful of any methodologies that your company has already put in place and that you don't mess up with any automation pieces that are, that are already in place. So getting in a regular cadence of talking frequently can help with that. And most of all, I just really encourage you to get curious with how you can use the tool. Okay, so we're on the final stretch here, tip number three. And this is where um, this is where you can start to get a better sense of the value of Pardot for your company. So I really encourage you to align Pardot to your company goals, and I'm going to give you some tips on how you can do this. So first of all, you have to know what your company goals are, which um, sounds kind of flip and, uh, and simple, but I find a lot of people don't, don't really have an answer to that. So ask your boss, what are, what are your company's goals on the high level? You know, where do you want to be at the end of 2018 if you don't know already? And, um, and this is the way to, that you can really connect to the big picture so that you're getting beyond just that day-to-day building out ideal client profiles, you're building, you're getting beyond um, simple habits of being in Pardot more regularly, and you're moving on to the high level of showing the value of Pardot to your organization so that you can keep getting that investment every year in your budget and you can, um, you can vouch for what you're getting out of it. So one example of company goals might be certain revenue metrics. Um, at this level, it's actually okay if that is not something you track directly in part of, but you need to you need to know what you're trying to reach. And then you also need to know what your own individual or departmental KPIs are, key performance indicators. So um, an example of this might be, uh, and so for this, think about the part that you can influence within your company goals. So um, an example of this might be marketing qualified leads or sales qualified leads. Like what is that impact that you're bringing? And then think also about what your baseline is. So um, if you're if you're just starting out on Pardot, I think it can be hard to tell how you're growing over time or how you're using the tool better if you don't have a um, a note somewhere uh, or a spreadsheet somewhere that kind of gives some baseline data of where you were when you started on the tool. So an example of some baseline data points could be your average open rate for your email newsletter or your average click rate or um, maybe your number of uh, leads that are qualified to go to, well, that gets into the, the point before that. So you don't want to do, you don't want to do number of leads here, but um, maybe you think about like, do you know, do you have a good sense about the quality of your leads yet? And maybe the answer to that is no. And so that's your baseline. And so at the end of the year, if you have a better sense of lead quality, then that's something that's changed that you can, so that Pardot helps you move the needle on. So this is what gets you lots of information unless you get better at tracking things. And then I want you to really consider what tools can you use in Pardot to make a mark on these. So Jacqueline talked briefly about um, 
some of the things that we're doing internally to, for example, like alert our sales team when we have someone who's interested and that um, that can help us increase the number of, um, of qualified leads that we pass off to our sales team, right? So that's something that we wouldn't be able to do without Cardot. We have to be really smart about kind of setting that up in a way that works both for our culture and for the way that we want to engage with people because we don't want to just cold call everyone who, you know, clicks on a link on our website. That wouldn't be appropriate for the kind of company that we want to be. So I think it's really important to think about your company values in this context as well and what would be what what feels like a good extension of your brand and a good extension of your personalities that will help you kind of scale the great work that you're already doing. And I think Jacqueline is going to um, post a link to a landing page here because we're creating a um, fairly extensive audit resource that we're interested in sharing with you. Um, and this will help you. It gets beyond just the quick start audit that we were talking about that Salesforce provides. It's, it's more of like a utilization audit, audit to give you a sense of kind of how you might stack up against other product users. And, um, and even other people in your, in your industry for email. So if you're interested in that, we encourage you to click on that link and we'll be sending that in the follow-up uh, email as well. Okay, so we are almost at Q&A point here. So quick recap, um, what we went through today was defining your ideal client, first of all, thinking about developing some part out habits with Q routine and reward and thinking about what some of those everyday things are that you do anyway as a marketer that you could start to move into Pardot and getting some social um, support for that to really kind of make that more of a routine. And then think about aligning Pardot with your company goals so that it's not just this standalone thing that only one person in marketing knows about, but you really have some talking points to bring up with your leadership team, with your board, um, with your other coworkers about uh, about how you might be able to use part up more deeply to do what you're already doing. Okay, and then we have some resources here and we'll be sending this deck uh, in the follow-up email, like I said. So you'll, you'll receive the deck and you'll receive the recording. Um, we're, we're giving you this ideal client resource to connect back to that tip number one. Um, to connect to the concept of developing a Pardot habit. Uh, we're giving you this link to the Marketing Automation Trailblazer group. They're also asking for feedback on the, the product Pardot right now. So it's your big chance to, um, to give feedback if you wonder why, I don't know, why one thing is not as good as MailChimp or one thing is so much better, that sort of thing. Um, it's your big chance. And then I also really encourage you to look at whether there's a Pardot user group in your city because this can just be a great support network of people who, um, I think for us, the main value is just getting a sense of like what, what issues are you versus the tool, um, which can be really hard to do sometimes with marketing automation. So user groups are a safe space where you can just talk really openly about any problems that you're seeing with the tool, but also kind of think about whether some of that might be your own business process and it, are there things that you could change to um, start to change that. And then number three, um, again, we're encouraging you to align part out with your company goals and we'll be giving a, um, a link to this audit and support offering after the webinar. And then I think as soon as the, as soon as the webinar ends, there'll also be just a quick survey that you can fill out to um, get a little bit more information about that. We're just, we're trying to build the kind of support offerings that we wish we had when we started part out. So we're really um, inviting you from the ground level now to be part of that and are excited to see where this takes us. And I'm gonna leave my email up here. I really encourage you to reach out personally if you have any questions at all, but um, for those who don't want to or who want to just share more publicly, um, I encourage you to type a question in the chat panel and we will open it up whenever you're ready, Jacqueline. Sure. So um, while we wait um, for people to enter some questions in there, there was a question that came into my head and I was really curious about your answer. Um, what is the feature um, that you think you've gotten the most from in our own Pardot instance? Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. So um, 
So for me, I think I think I really love where grading and scoring intersects the most of, of anything in Pardot. And um, and so what I mean by that is that scoring kind of gives you the sense of how engaged people are on your site, right? It's going to tell you who's been to your blog post, who's been to different um, webinars or events, or landing pages, that sort of thing. And that's all great, and it's nice to see scores that are over 500 or above, and you can customize that if there's certain pages you want to score higher. So that's cool. But then where it gets really, really interesting is where you intersect that with grading. And so with grading, that's where you get to kind of set up different rules for what attributes are going to make someone go to a higher or lower grade on um, as a part of prospect. So an example is the closer someone gets to kind of who you think of as your ideal client profile, um, the higher their grade should be. And so when you combine those two things, it gets really cool because you can create lists that have both highly engaged and highly desirable prospects for you as either you know, a nonprofit who's trying to reach out to new members or donors or a, uh, or a small business who's trying to reach certain customers. And then you can do smart things with following up with those people and you can get a better sense of like, you know, maybe not everybody who becomes highly engaged is worth personal outreach, but probably some portion of them are, or maybe there's some special offer that you can extend to them. So I think that's been really fun. Great, thank you for that answer. It's kind of, it's great to hear, because we work together in Pardot to hear um, what your answer was. Um, I think for me, the finding a friend component that we talked about in this webinar is mm. um, been key to like really assure that I'm using it to the fullest and then hearing your answer was great. Um, okay, so another question that we got was, how do I get my team members on board with using Pardot? Yeah. Yeah. So I think this is something we focus on really heavily. I think it's kind of the core of what we do as a consultant firm is trying to increase user adoption and trying to kind of make people more comfortable. And um, I think ideally, if you have one person who can kind of be the champion of using Pardot at your organization, then that person can kind of be, be the cheerleader that gets other people on board. And so um, I guess I have a couple different recommendations in this space. First, if you have the opportunity to hire, um, look for either someone who's super curious and open to new technology or somebody who's already got a little bit of Pardot skills under their belt. And so, um, so, the, so the first point, Jacqueline was hired. I'm just going to call you out here because I think it's a pretty awesome little story about how you can get up to speed quickly. Jacqueline was hired last year and didn't know any Pardot um, at the end of 2016. and then. 2017, no, 2016. And then now, just slightly over a year later, she's got her specialist certification and she's, you know, really excited about different ways to use the tool. So I think if you can kind of hire for that curious personality who's not afraid of new things, that um, that can go a long way. But otherwise, in terms of increasing adoption, I guess I would say that um, if you can, again, just kind of find excuses to talk about what you're doing in Pardot, regularly, I think that can be really helpful. Um, a lot of times, a lot of times it's marketing and sales who are the primary users of Pardot. And for us, sales doesn't really get into the tool very much, but they do look at the, um, the connector piece that shows up in the contact object in the account and opportunity object in Salesforce. They look at that stuff fairly frequently. And then we can also like tag them based on Pardot intelligence to, to do certain things. So I think it's really a work in progress. Like we're we're gonna host the brown bag lunch for our sales and marketing team in a couple of weeks to just talk about some specific use cases more. Um, but I think you have to like think about think about what they're doing already and think about one way Pardot tools could potentially help that and and then just kind of get willing to roll up your sleeves together. Um, the send Pardot email piece has been a really accessible way, I would say, too, for um, for people who just have uh, a little bit of Pardot awareness to get into the tool, because that that's where you can you can put a button in the again in the contact object in Salesforce that says send Pardot email, and then you give people access to Pardot templates, which could be text only or they could be fancy HTML templates, and then that lets them have the access to scaled resources that 
can still be signed from them, but um, but they don't have to like actually go in the tool and worry about messing up automation or any of that stuff. Any okay. other questions? Um, so we have one more question. If anyone has anything else they'd like to ask, even if that's kind of general marketing automation questions or talking about email marketing or best practices, feel free to throw them at us over there in the questions um, section of your panel. Um, but the last question I have for right now are, what are some metrics I should be tracking to make sure I'm using Pardot to the fullest? Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. So um, I think just to give another quick plug for our audit, I think uh, if you do the audit right after this, you'll get a sense of um, of how well you might be using it compared to what we've seen being really helpful on the platform. So, um, so just doing that so you can get a sense of like, are you using forms, landing pages, blah, blah, blah. Um, I think that's a good place to start. Other metrics that we look at are um, the number of leads that are generated by marketing sources. Um, there's there's some new exciting things that Pardot is doing with campaign influence right now that I think are actually going to give you a lot more flexibility to um, to report on attribution because they're kind of thinking up how Salesforce and Pardot think about campaigns, which has always been sort of a a thorn in our side before of having whole different definitions for a campaign in Salesforce and Pardot. Um, so I think that's going to be helpful. Um, just generally looking at uh, rates for emails, I think, can be really helpful too. And Jacqueline, you probably have um, something to add here too, because I know that you we just sent out our monthly newsletter yesterday, and you're always excited about. Um, kind of looking at how open click rates compare to last time and then also looking at any kind of A-B test style metrics that come out of that. But anything else come to mind for you? Sure, yeah. I, I um, So metrics that I track to make sure I'm using Pardot to the fullest, definitely email metrics, um, especially for regular emails or um, a newsletter that we send out. Um, I like to keep a uh, really good eye on what people are clicking, um, what they're not clicking, and seeing um, part of has a tool that allows you to see the read rate versus the skim rate. That's really great to see if someone actually paid attention um, and read the full email. Um, I also like to keep my eye on um, opt-outs, and I think that um, that's also another um, place to kind of know is is are people just deciding that this isn't for them? Um, you know, are they uninterested or unengaged? Um, and that's a great place to go and see there, as well as your deliverability rates. So email rates for me are key. Um, I also like to keep my eye on um, how our resources are being used. So um, if uh, we put out a resource like this webinar and I see people starting to automatically sign up and the and the numbers are going up. That's great. If not, maybe there's something we can tweak within the landing page um, using dynamic content and A-B testing are key there. So I like to keep my eye on um, new resources, past resources and email metrics. And we did get um, a final question um, in here. Um, uh, we will be sending out the slide deck. So if you um, want any of the resources that we talked about um, in the prior slide, we will be sending those in an email and we will also be sharing the slide deck. So you can click there from the slide deck or from the email. Um, yeah, we'll be sending lots of lots of stuff to help you after this. And we and with that, we okay. Well, yeah, go go for it. We're wrapping up. Oh nope, that's it. All right. Well, thank you everyone so much for joining us today. This was really fun, and I I really encourage you to check out the resources that we're sending after the webinar. Follow up with me personally, and um, join some of those uh, communities so that we can keep the conversation going. Thanks.